Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to today's Partner Web Conference. This is Fast Track Dynamics 365 for Talent Tech Talk. Today's topic, what's new in Core HR? My name is Janice and I'm going to be your moderator today. We are broadcasting this web conference through Teams Live Events and the audio can be heard through your PC speakers. Today's web conference is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. If you do not consent to be a part of a recorded session, we ask that you please disconnect now. Attendees may access the web conference recording within 72 hours via the same registration link that was used to attend today's live broadcast. If you have questions for the presenters or need support, you can turn on the Q&A panel by selecting the question mark icon located in the upper right hand corner of your screen. We do have presenters standing by to answer your questions throughout the session. Now on to the presentation presenting for us today from Microsoft. We have senior R&D solution architect Waibao Pendakar and joining Waibao is uh, Darren Kramer, who is a principal program manager and he's going to be supporting Q&A. So without any further delay, Waibao, floor is all yours. Thank you, Janice, and welcome all to this tech talk. So the topic is what's new in talent core HR. So just to you know begin this, so it's not going to be an introduction to talent features but it's about uh, the new features, what has upcome in few months and anything which would impact the implementation of talent, you know. So going further into the agenda, we will be basically looking on few of the uh, features around environment management, leave and absence, compensation, performance, integration, extensibility, the feature management workspace and there is an appendix to links to the what's new and the release of your plan. So I will move to the environment management. So we have added an instance type, you know, for provisioning the talent. I'll just present my screen to show that. So when I'm on the LCS project, under the LCS. I go to the talent app management. So this means that you already have a license and a basically the subscription for talent and you are the administrator in order to do this. I will click on the add environment. And if you see this is a new it's basically the instance of sandbox and production. So we have provided the differentiation between sandbox and production. And the idea here is to basically, you know, like be able to move forward with our other enhancements which are coming around this. So the important point would be like, you know, you inst instance type sandbox would be used for any feature testings prior you move to production, any preview features you want to test before you basically enable them in production. And then that helps you to basically distinguish between, you know, for different purposes around your environment planning. If you see, you know, like uh, below my CDS environment is shown. If you don't see this environment, it may be that, you know, it's basically created in an unsupported region. So we have our docs article which talks about supported regions. It's currently United States, uh, Europe, United Kingdom and Australia. So you need to be careful around around that. Okay. I will not do anything here. I'll just cancel. So that's what's been highlighted here. Moving to the next is the leave and absence. Now around the leave and absence, we basically have added new workflow conditions. You know, like so currently if I am submitting my leave application, then it, it should go through a workflow for approval. But if I my manager on behalf of me or HR on behalf of me basically submits it, then you may basically want to have it auto approved or maybe some other condition. So you will basically have added those conditions. I will again go to the system here. Workflow. 
under the leave and absence. And I'll click on the two to four no record. And this should bring up my workflow window. So I'll select the approval. Just I'll go to the level down where I have it. Click properties and under conditions, I'll set it up. Run this step only when condition is met. Add the condition. I will have to select the entity which is a leave and absence request. And if you see submitted by human resource and submitted by manager. OK, so these are the two things what have been added here. And this submitted by human resource evaluates the system user who uh, is basically doing this task. It has a human resource role within talent. The submitted man will evaluate uh, if the user has uh, you know, is a line hierarchy manager of the worker associated to it. So that's how the system basically would validate and process the workflow. I will not complete any steps here. So that's basically the new two conditions uh, in workflow what we have added. Moving to the next. So we have allow reason codes on leave requests. So on the leave, leave and absent types, right? Basically, we can specify reasons code now, which could be configured. And and uh, leave leave types are defined, you know, to configure various types of absences which may require from an organization point of view. And mostly in most of the organizations, certain leave types would require reason codes to, you know, like provide more information around it. So again, I'll go to the system. To demonstrate. So I'm in the leave and absence type setup. Select sick leave, you know, this is the one which I've configured. So in here we have reason code require option. Basically this, uh, both of them. So if I disable them right, then it, it doesn't require any reason codes. I will enable. And I need to add reason codes before I enable to, them, you know. So those reason codes should be set up prior to that. Uh, the difference, what you see, right? If all the reason codes are already attached to this particular leave type, then it it will show none here. That's basically because I have already attached all the records. But if you have anything, you could add more to it. The this ensures that you know when uh, employees or workers are basically submitting leave requests for a specific type, it's if it is enabled for that they need to specify the reason code. It becomes a mandatory field. The other option which is available around now is uh, the restrict access to selected role. You know, like. When you enable, you basically are able to select the security roles which controls the who is allowed to basically access this particular leave type. So by default, you know certain loads are added. You could click add and more, add more roles. So depends upon the organization requirements how they want to configure. Back to my slide now. So that covers this. The other important thing what we have here is, you know, like to basically view balance transactions. So from the HR point of view or from the manager point of view, you know, users, uh, they will like to look at uh, particular balance transactions, even the future balance transactions for an employee. So we'll just move to the system.
we'll go to the people's workspace select India. leave an absence then view time off and by default it shows the approved time of screen but we have time of request basically so if you see you know like the reason codes are available here also to view so from this is where you'll see and if you click on the balances you should be able to see the balances as of date okay so it shows current balance the forecasted balance you know if i want to go and check the futures uh, basically the future point of view the, the scenario could be an employee has resigned or you know it's you need to terminate but before that you would like to understand how much leave balance as it is so you know the the actions could be taken appropriately on that so i'll just go one month ahead apply so if you see now my balance has changes the forecast balances i could also like you know if i want to drill down into how much is the current balance what is it made up of i click on the current balance field and it basically provides me a drill down list of all the transactions okay so you could go as much month as you think you are able to like you just need to be careful about the accrual rate you know if it is semi monthly annual it is so depending upon the time period you select the balances would be adjusted there i'll move to the slide now so we have basically uh, provided not on the leave and absence additional date options when configuring the plans the leave plans so the scenarios could be you know like uh, there would be certain plans leave type which would not be or it would be very specific to a certain criteria custom criteria is like it could be around anniversary date original hire date seniority date or any adjusted date no? and you will need to configure that so going again into the system okay so just create a new one image so just to be quickly on that select leave type as six just enter the date here i want and select the accrual frequency example weekly accrual period basis so if i you know i have this plan start date and then employee specific date I click employee specific date you know it basically adds additional field here which is by default custom but then I could basically select you know what I want to have it fixed for this particular plan it could also happen uh, that you could also change the employee specific date based on the employee record so just click save click assign to employees one way to assign the leave then here i could basically select what i want to change here original hire seniority so i have few options here and once i select that add a workers here and assign plan those will get updated i will not do it here okay so that's that's basically how you could use the additional dates functionality to configure specific leave plans as as the requirements from an organization so going forward uh this is the screenshot around you know the assigning to the employees so what i look at now in the compensation basically what for the compensation plans we have added advanced compensation security so again this is restrict access to respective compensations based on the rules what does it allow right you know there would be certain compensation plan which should not be available for everyone to look at and to specific 
uh, users or roles and they are very like maybe probably around executive band level we'll again go into the system go to the compensation management workplace fix compensation plan choose one of the one you know, like so you have this basically the restrict access to selected roles option here i'll just disable it you know to stimulate the situation so i i want to basically configure this particular composition plan that it should be restricted to selected users within the organization roles so i click yes by default the compensation and benefits manager uh, is added so that's probably the right thing to have you can click add to put additional roles into it as per the organization requirements and i'll select human resource manager okay so it goes so users having these two roles would be able to view this compensation plan and assign it basically so that's how you control it okay one more thing Excuse me so in order to enable this restrict access to selected roles you will need to first enable it wow so I wonder what happened Uh, sorry for this. So you need to go to compensation management. Thanks. The parameters under the compensation management. Under the compensation tab, we need to set this up under the advanced access. If I don't enable it, I won't be able to restrict access to compensation plans by roles. So this parameter should be enabled. Uh, in a, in order to make, make the feature available and restrict the compensation plans to restrict by rules. Okay. We'll move to the next slide now. So multiple compensation levels by job. Now this basically like you have a, a job. I, I take an example here, accounting manager, and you may have different levels within you know the areas uh, around uh, basically it may be controlled based on the experience mm, or it may be region specific and probably you'll have you instead of creating separate jobs you could basically manage it by creating levels within the same job and, and that's when you assign basically uh, during the position allo allo allocation to the workers you'll be able to select which level of compensation you want to select and that would uh, derive the control limits for each level so if you see in the setup we have low threshold that is minimum the maximum based on the ma market analysis or market situations what you have done within the job market and that could be a control point you know which would be something you know like the desired range for that particular level from an organization point of view so Again, I'll go to the system just to quickly show you that. From anywhere. Oh, sorry. So under the jobs, I click on the account manager just to show you know, like here. I can click add. Basically, you have the levels which you have configured already, and then you can pick at one of the levels which you think should be available for this job. You can specify. So that's how you assign it. And basically when you're going to the employee to assign it, you will basically be able to 
uh, select the levels. So that's what you know, it's basically available as part of the system. Now I'll move to the next slide. So under the compensation, we also have like added features to basically when you do cost company trans transfers. So you are basically the scenario would be an employee is basically either promoted or is being moved to a different legal entity based on different situations. And you want to basically transfer the worker to new position assignment and you you basically within that would like to assign the new compensation plan. So that's now available. I'll again go to the system. Filter for an employment. I guess I'll select basically Julia. I'll go to change position. Basically, here I would be able to select the new assignment date, you know, like just example. Never. I select the position. Then under the compensation, I will be able to select a different legal entity and the compensation plans basic uh, basically from. So there is a B1 which is assigned here. The levels. So in here, basically I could uh, put the competition period. I'll just like to simulate the situation. So I've just put some number in a random number to show that you know how that it is validated. So what we saw in the the thresholds when we were setting up the job. So it's, it says that it has to be between 100,000 to 200,000, not more than that for this particular band. You could correct it and basically rectify and then basically click change position in order to get that employee transferred to the new position across the different legal entity. I will not do this. I'll just cancel. Okay. Moving forward. The other way is like future compensation assignment in the position and transfer. So that's also possible. You know, like you could I'll go to the system. So that makes way. you know with with change position also you you could do that, you know, by assigning the date in future. But there is also another way like if I go to the workers around the compensation tab. I click the fixed plan. Click new. And then under the position, you know, if I've already created a position and assigned to the employee, it will appear here. So if you see the 589 business manager, that's basically going to start somewhere in June 2020, first of June 2020. So you could basically select it from here and do the same thing. Effective date, the pay rate, and then you can click OK to basically assign that position. To will not do this task because I need my demo machine. So go back to the presentation. So just coming back to here, you know, this could be like uh, the scenarios are that you you normally have some minimum time period required. You know, the scenarios could be to basically have the position place as a policy that should be in place and uh, based on the HR. Uh, standards operating procedures basically so it could be aligned to any one of the situation there. The other part you know like uh, is about having decimal places under the variable compensation. So this we had before basically fixed uh, like in integer format, not anything in real basically where you couldn't add, uh, add assign decimal values. So 
you know, if the compensation around the cash bonuses could depend upon different rules or formulas and that could land up into decimal places like example here what I've shown is like 6555. So again, I'll just go quickly to the system. In here. So the number of units is the field where you will basically be able to specify the decimal amount, you know. So it, it depends basically how, how that's computed. Some of the organization may have decided to basically round off, but certain things, you know, like certain specific bonuses could be uh, coming out that they would like to pay in decimals. That is possible now. So we'll move to the next slide. Around performance, basically. So on, on the performance side, the first point is like uh, uh, we had the final score rating right uh, field, which which was not uh, uh, writable. So that's been modified now and you are able to import the final review scores. You know if they're getting computed outside talent uh, or any other you know, external systems which you export, then you can use the DMF entity performance review to upload that and that's possible now. Going to the next point is the performance journals attachments enabled for managers and employees. So I'll quickly go into the system and try to just highlight the. So if you're a manager, you know, because I'm like system admin, so I'll have all access, but if they're manager role, then you could basically choose your direct reportees and attach uh, any files to it. And you could basically use the example I'm just saying here on the first record, you see there is a count zero basically, but if I click attachments, I'm able to add any of the attachment, you know, of different types. You could add those type into uh, to document type settings and they will appear here. So you could basically select any one and then you know browse it and upload the file and this will be attached in here. Once it is attached, right? I'll not do that. So so the count will increase here on the number of attachments which you have. Okay. That's around the performance journals, you know, the attachments. The other part what we have is like coming soon, which is printing of performance reviews at the moment. That's not possible, but it's in it's in already in development and would be uh, coming soon. The idea here is to whatever uh, performance review you see as part of the template within the system that basically will be printed uh, and uh, the printing would be to a Word document. And for that would help you to basically uh, have the printed copies for reviews if, if they need to be circulated or like for discussions, one to one discussions. Then the other thing is coming soon, which is the view extended information. That basically it's a new option which will help uh, let managers basically view performance of both their direct reportees as well as their extended report is so if if i am the director i have like two or three managers reporting to me and they have in in uh, report people reporting to them I, I would be able to basically uh, through this feature would be able to see the performance uh, reviews performance goals uh, of those employees also so that's also coming soon moving to the next so again just to highlight here there were some uh, bugs around uh, thing the performance like uh, feedback around email message and performance review comments you know so those bugs are also fixed and they're rolled out to the uh, digital production so they should be available for for the current systems 
going forward it's the integration extensibility first thing to highlight here would be the position hierarchy validation form again i will move to the system because the form itself talks about what it is going to do so i so the scenario would be that you are importing you know like uh, the positions and the position hierarchy uh, externally into talent and here is the area where you could basically validate the line hierarchies so if there are any circular references those will be highlighted here which you could correct the within the system and and then you could basically close the issues around that so that ensures that you know like your position hierarchy is in line there are no circular reference and so you don't get into untoward scenarios when you're testing so it's been added the other part is the common data service integration page you know like again i will go to the system so in order to enable the integration with the cds right you need to enable this parameter so the idea would be like if you are if you are installing talent or implementing and configuring it so at the beginning you could disable this use you know upload all your relevant data into core talent uh, using the dmf once that's all done then you could basically enable it so once you enable it it will start syncing with the cds uh, database and the data would be populated the other area would be on the administration side you know like it's, it's kind of to you know some kind of like support related thing uh, to identify issues between core hr and cds entities basically so if if the records are being synced or not so under here in the drop down you could select the cds entity example i'll just select one of them and it should show you basically the cds entity reference the talent entity the talent reference and basically if you see there are issues you know with syncing then you could basically click again if you have done any corrections which were required you can sync use the sync now to sync them and validate whether after the correction the records are visible within cds entity so we'll go to the next custom fields okay so probably you would be aware that uh, there is I'll again go to the system just to bring up that screen and then talk about it So if I've added custom fields to any of the entities, they will appear here. Tables so select and the custom field will populate. Under the entities could basically click and enable, you know, wherever I would like this custom field to be populated and you know, for a CDS, the entity basically will start with prefix CDM. So if I want to push this to the CDS, I should select the CDS entities and enable them. After I do enable, it's important that I apply changes. Once I apply changes, the sync will happen. So the custom field, wherever it is, uh, we we I will explain that in one side. But if this allows basically uh, to push the custom field on the entities, it will basically sync immediately. But remember, you need to click apply changes. Going forward. So the integration extension, we will we'll like to talk the capabilities, right? Um, so entities to support custom fields in there. So all talent entities are being updated or refactored, you know, to basically support custom fields. So we have a reference doc article basically, you know, core HR and common. It's basically updated and also we have the what's new page which uh, weekly updates. So there are certain entities which are refactored for supporting uh, custom fields in CDS that are populated. 
the other area is uh, the new entities. So all new entities what we create will support custom fields in CDS. So any new entities which we push right would already have that. So you don't need to basically worry about it. We are working on basically completing almost uh, we are near to that work, you know, like ensuring that all the talent entities what we have at the moment to update it and push it to CDS. The other area what I would like to talk here is basically about uh, integration with FinOps. So currently we do have a FinOps data integrated template available. So the template can be extended to basically use or like configure the different entities what you want. So I uh, would like to highlight if you're expecting that we are going to release some new templates. So at the moment uh, it, it doesn't seem to be, but the existing template can be used to add, you know, like task which which are related uh, to very specific entities. What you want to achieve between FinOps and talent. Uh, it's important that you validate, you know, like uh, those entities that you want to do are available on the CDS. If not, uh, then basically look out for alternate approaches around it. So I will move to the next slide. Which is around, you know, like the alerts with email support. So from platform update 26, which we shortly call as PU26, the ability to send email, you know, when you create an alert is possible now. So the scenarios could be like benefits expire in two weeks, and so you will like to have an alert basically set to you as well as send it to the email. So that's possible now doing. Just talking on the other field which you see, right? Uh, it's part of I don't know whether it's readable or not, but it's send externally. So that's a platform feature which which is still uh, in in progress at on talent side which will be first rolled out with FinOps and that's basically you know having the business events. So at the moment it's not available for talent, but uh, there is work going on to see how we progress on the platform team to ensure when we can have it. So that's it on the alerts with the email support. So rest of the feature on the alert creation remains the same. There is no change on that. Then well, coming to the features management workspace in talent. So this is uh, we already had a tech talk on feature management, you know, like so this workspace, you know, I just read this slide because it's exactly what it is going to be doing. So it will be made available and which you basically view, enable, disable and schedule the features. So the idea would be that, you know, in your sandbox environments, you enable them, test them basically when you're sure that it's a, that the features what you have enabled and tested around meets your needs around the requirements and are being fully tested. You could go to the production environment and then enable them. So there is a link basically to view the documentation from there. So that should be I have copied the link of the feature management tech talk, you know, which would basically take you into more details and provide you more better understanding around it. So coming to appendix, right? I would like to highlight, you know, the problem maybe most of you are aware uh, we have released the wave two plan. So that's our release plan, which covers, you know, from October 2019 to March 2020 our roadmap and the first link basically gives you across all our D Dynamics 365 products. The the next link what's new and planned for talent is specific to the new features, you know the planned features from October 2019 to March 2020. So you could basically visit them and look at. So just touching base on the uh, uh, reflecting back on the environment management, right? Where we have added the instance type as sandbox and production, right? To differentiate. So we'll be coming out with, uh, with a feature to copy data from one environment to another. And that's where it will help you to basically uh, differentiate between the environments. That's okay. The, the Either it is one way or after you go live, if you want to uh, 
uh, refresh your sandbox from production to a sandbox environment to stimulate any situation scenario or the next rollout of features, then you, you should be able to do it. So that timeline is available under the second link. What's new and plan for talent and other other plan features also. The second part, what I would like to highlight here is basically Docs article, which is uh, the talent uh, under that. It's what new. So every weekly we have a cadence basically to push updates. So you know you will basically able to view that and we'll able to understand what's being pushed, what's in preview, what's coming soon. So uh, uh, the another part to it would be any entities where we are basically enabling support which are pushed to basically the production and any new entities which are basically getting added. So that way you could basically be up to date with the information needed uh, for you to align with your implementation or any work which you are doing around pre-sales or delivering solutions or taking you know alternative approaches to meet certain requirements. So with that, I will basically move to the Q&A section and would stop speaking now and see if we have any questions. So do we have any questions here like which needs to answer or address? I see most of the questions are already answered. But feel free to you know ask we could basically spend another few few more minutes. All right, thank you, Vipal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, as our presenter mentioned, uh, we are open for Q&A, so if you have any additional questions, please feel free to enter them into the Q&A panel and we'll address them shortly. In the meantime, I'd like to bring your attention to a link that I posted in the Q&A panel. That's a link to a short survey for this web conference, and we ask that you please take a moment before logging out to access it. We hope that you found today's information helpful, and if you enjoyed today's web conference, have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, or you'd like to submit topics for future web conferences, this is your chance to let us know. The survey scores are on a scale from one to five, with five being the highest score possible. And let me check the Q&A panel. I'm not seeing any new questions come in. Darren, did you have any that you wanted to summarize? Um, I don't think so. If there are any follow ups, um, certainly um, push them through or even contact me. Um, looks like there was one just entered. Um, how does the integration with finance and op how does this integrate with finance and operations? Also, can you show more of the benefits section? Um, uh, talent does uh, have a template that is used for the integration between talent and finance and operations. It's some of the base or core entities that are available. It has um, a, a new template as we as we run through all of the processing. The template we don't have necessarily add new entities to it, but it is available for uh, you to add remove uh, options as the uh, information um, as the CDS entities are available. It doesn't do anything with benefits uh, at this particular time. Um, the, the second question that just came in was basic entities such as the worker position association is not available in CDS. Um, sync integration and any plan for the same. So the, the, the worker position assignment should be there. Um, if this is related to the relationships, um, we will be going back through and looking at more of the, I call it the auxiliary data around workers' positions to um, fill out some of that information. We're currently looking at like task management and those types of things, uh, skills and the competencies, um, but we'll eventually get to those. We don't have necessarily timelines for those particular relationship ones at this at, right now. Those are the questions that are um, have been published so far. All right, thank you, 
Darren, uh, Wipeout, do you have any final thoughts before we wrap up? I do have one more item. Oh. Looks like it came in. OK. Um, I would, because um, this question does get asked quite a bit. Do we know when the financial dimensions will be integrated from talent to, to finance and operations? I can't specify a date on this one. We are waiting for some things from the finance and operations team that we're dependent on. Um, uh, so I don't have a date. Um, just know that it's a high priority for us to get the the integration uh, to also include the uh, the dimensions uh, between the two systems. All right, excellent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude today's web conference. Attendees can access the web conference recording via the same registration link that was used to attend today's live broadcast. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters and thank you audience for logging in and joining us today.